The sermon for this evening is from the uh, Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 6, verses 25 to 34. Uh, the sermon is entitled, Seek First the Kingdom of God. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, as we continue on here in our midweek Lenten series, O oh, Love, How Deep, How Broad, How High, we dwell upon Jesus' words through this very love that He gives to us as He is speaking to the disciples at the Sermon on the Mount. He says to them, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious. I know I've told you or mentioned this story before, but um, as we are in spring, now we have the, the humming bead feeder out. I don't know why I'm always so fascinated by these little birds. I'd always just look at the window and see their birds, their wings flutter just back and forth, and you could hear that whoosh, you know, when they're flying right next to you. And sometimes they even greet me as I'm going out on my way to work. And I know what they want. They just want the sugar. And there they sit at the perch of that feeder and they drink the nectar to which replenishes their body. And every single day it is the same, right? And even for this little bird, it reminds me how the Lord has his hand in it all. Everything. Absolutely everything. From the birds of the air to the lilies of the field, our Lord continues to sustain the land, the birds, the plants, and of course, especially you. And because of this, Jesus says, therefore, right? Do not be anxious because God is not absent. God is not on vacation. Actually, for them, the disciples, Jesus was there in their midst, teaching them as he is and was and will always be the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Because the Lord provides. Just as we heard on Sunday from the ram provided for Abraham on Mount Moriah, and here they were in front of the true sacrifice, Jesus Christ. You know, there's something about those creeds that we always confess. Why do we do that? Is it just something that we say? Of course, we know it's more than that, right? That this is our confession of faith time and time again, Wednesday, Sunday, daily, 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 we confess the creed and there we say those words, I believe in God the Father, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. This is where we meditate on those very words, the love of God, how deep, how broad, how high His love and mercy and bountiful gifts truly are. That not only did he create each and every one of us, but he continues to provide for each and every one of us. He continues to protect all of you all by what? We're not dealing with a transactional God here where we do something and then he gives something to us. No, but out of his own fatherly divine goodness, without any merit or worthiness in any of us here, We're blessed, so blessed in this life of faith. And there in the creed, we revel in the joy of God's grace, knowing full well who we are under his eternal care yesterday, today, tomorrow. It is all the same. And what a blessing and joy that is. But at the same time, we do face the myriad of challenges. The afflictions, the sufferings, especially during this time of the pandemic, many of our patterns are disrupted, our way of life, our way of doing things are altered and even looking forward to what is to come. We, some people, we don't really know, right? Daunting it may seem. 
But it is during these times where we must see what is truly happening in our midst of the anxiety that is before us. It is during these very moments of life where we clearly see that very tension. On one hand, Scripture says what? Of course, if the Lord cares for even the minuscule things of this life, how much more value do you have? And we say, of course, God made me. He has redeemed me. He has called me into the faith. Yet as we live in the flesh, in our time, in our fallenness, we wonder, and that doubt creeps in, doesn't it? What is our value? Entrenched in this anxiety, bound and tightly wound by these very questions. What shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? What is tomorrow going to look like? When is this pandemic over? How do I cope through it all? And there the evil foe is telling you that in the midst of these burdens, these anxieties, you are in an impossible and most precarious situation and you need to figure it out because no one will help you, not even God's word. God can't help you now, the evil one says. God doesn't care for you. God doesn't love you out of his mercy. And in this anxiety, we proceed as if we are playing the game of survivor, hoping somehow, somehow we can last on this island by ourselves. But there we're left in greater despair, anxiety, and worry. <laughs> the devil, you know what he loves for each and every one of you? He loves for you to worry, doesn't he? Why does the devil love for each and every one of you to worry? Why does he want you to get to that place? Because he very well knows that when we worry, subtly we are turning away from God. Subtly we are disbelieving that God truly cares for us. And we need to take upon our own lives with our own two hands, not rooted in the word, not connected to the faith, proceeding on our own way, trying to find the way to alleviate the anxiety that is before us. And this is the tension. This is the seek in our lives, the quest to somehow find the answer to the ever-going anxiety that is before us. But the question is, what do you seek first? This is our question for this evening. This is our question of meditation. What do you seek first in the midst of anxiety? It reminds me of, uh, of Ruby, an emerald, as Zoe has named them. The hummingbirds, those are our family pets. They're outdoor, easy, convenient. They're great, right? But as they come to the door, the window, we, you know, I, which they somehow, a lot of times they greet me after I come home. They just flutter in the air right at my face. And I know what they're saying. I mean, they're not talking, but I know what they want. They want to be fed. They're seeking the one who's giving them food. They're seeking the one who sustains them in life. And it reminds me how God will always have his creative hand in it all. Because he is the source of life. He is the one in this life of faith that we ought to seek. And we know this, right? We all know this. But yet, in times of worry, in times of anxiety, where or what do you seek? Ask yourself that very question this night. 
For whatever you seek in that very instant, there you find your God. Examine yourself. What is it? What do you seek? Is it the security in your bank account? Is it the trust in your self-reliance, your human wisdom? What do you seek? Is it your incessant need for that smartphone screen? What do you seek? Is it shopping? Is it drinking? Is it the lust for the lavishness of this flesh? to somehow fulfill the emptiness that is before you. What do you seek? And there we find ourselves in the perpetual cycle of, of sin in the flesh, like a merry-go-round like merry -go or a broken record. It's always the same old story, isn't it? From the same old tree, from the same old fall. And thus we too see the spiritual battle before us. Jesus says in Luke 21, but watch yourselves. Look, be sober minded. Lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life. And that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. And soon it can be a trap. Wondering how or which way we can survive on our own little island. All the meanwhile, asking all the wrong questions and seeking all the wrong answers. And soon enough, God's word becomes a distant memory in all of our lives where the cares of the world becomes first to which we seek in our lives. Indeed, O oh, you of little faith. Oh, how these words humbly resonate in us all because we all know how far we have fallen short we know we seek things that are first in our flesh rather than God you remember who our Lord is that though we do not deserve though we see the crushing blow of our sin he is a God who shows us his love. He provides for our needs. He defends us from all kind of danger. He guards and protects us from evil. But why would he do such things knowing who we are, knowing what we deserve? Look at the birds. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into the barns. Yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not more? not of more value than they. And you are. You know, his blood shed at Calvary proves and shows you your value to God. His faithful sacrifice shows you how much he loves you as your redeemer lays his life down for you as he faithfully trod into the fiery wrath of God for you. The one who bore every suffering, every sorrow, every sin upon himself for you. This is your value to die for you. This is your value to give you the words of true peace by the wounds of Christ. This is your value. It's the Lamb of God who is lifted high upon a tree. And who three days later rises to give you victory. Our Lord died and conquered death for each and every one of you. Our Lord rose and brought you victory. And that is indeed forgiveness of your sins. Even in your present suffering that you may be facing, even at this time where you might nestle it so close internally for no one else to see. God knows 
your suffering. But in that suffering, he gives you the suffering of Christ. And that is his blood. Do not be anxious because Christ keeps you. Do not be anxious because Christ robes you with his promise-filled righteousness. Do not be anxious because Christ, as he says in Scripture, has overcome the world for you. Do not be anxious because Christ has promised, I will be with you until the end of the age. You are not on your own little island. You are not out for yourself. But the kingdom of God has come. And though our worries arise and our anxieties shall appear, it is in this faith that we retreat to the word. Seek first his kingdom, the life of faith, the faith that clings and rests in the righteousness of Christ. For there your refuge is and always will be dwelling under the gracious and most comforting shadow of the Lord's wing. The wing of Jesus' words. Peace be with you, not as the world gives to you do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Indeed, O oh love, how deep, how broad, how high is Jesus for you. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.